clear that uh, we have a large percentage of the American population. I don't know how big it is, but we have tens of millions of Trump voters who uh, continue to believe that their rights as citizens are under threat by simple virtue of having to share the democracy with others. Um, I think uh, as long as they see Americanness as the same as one with whiteness, this is going to continue. We have to figure out how to get every American a place at the table in this democracy, but how to separate Americanness, America, from whiteness. Until we can confront that and talk about that, this is really going to continue. I was on Long Island this weekend uh, visiting a really dear friend, and I was really disturbed. I saw, you know, dozens and dozens of pickup trucks with, uh, you know, uh, explicatives against Joe Biden uh, on the back of them, yep. uh, Trump yep. flags, and some cases just dozens of American flags, which, you know, uh, is also just disturbing because essentially the message was clear. It was, this is my country. This is not your yep. country. I own this. And so until we're ready to have that conversation, this is going to continue. What really is concerning to me as well is it's, it's not just Democrats in Congress. I think there's a large percentage of Americans, even some of my colleagues uh, in journalism, who are invested in some way in pretending that this isn't the threat that it is. That is the real concern. Because, you know, the Trump voters who are not going to get on board with democracy, they're a minority. You can marginalize them long term. But if we don't take the threat seriously, then I think we're all in really bad shape. Totally agree. Mara Gay and Tom Nichols. Thank How you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. And this is just an off the top about something that I came across recently. So this American journalist, she said that she went to Long Island, New York, and she was just horrified by what she saw. She said that she saw trunk flags on pickup trucks with derogatory images of Harris and Biden. What that's called is freedom of speech. Uh, majority of Americans still value it. And what that also shows is majority of Americans are done with China Joe and Harris. They're done with the Democratic Party in general. The Democratic Party has been exposed as racist and Marxist and Marxist driven bowing down towards foreign uh, foreign uh, leaders and sacrificing American jobs, costing American jobs and giving them away to overseas. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what that's called. And the fact that she went even farther with it to say that, uh, hold on a minute, to say that when she turned a corner, she saw a bunch of American flags and to her, it just showed that it was a symbol of hatred. It was a symbol of them saying, we're not done, and the election was stolen, and this is our land, and it's a symbol of white uh, supremacy, and it is not a symbol of that. You could go anywhere on the globe, with the exception of some countries in the Middle East, and probably some countries in Northern Europe, and ask them, what does the American flag represent and they're going to tell you it represents freedom and it represents unity if it didn't why else would so many people be risking their life to come out here and actually die some of them die trying to get here because the flag in the country represent freedom that's why that's why so many immigrants for so long that have done it legally have actually stated that they love the american flag that's why so many people have fought and died for that flag and for the rights that we have, including the rights that majority of you guys have making yourselves out to be the way you are with burning the flag. The same flag that majority of you guys, ancestors and family members actually fought and died for. Think about that for a minute. So they're all screaming about, they're all throwing out these different civil rights leaders, both African-American, Native, um, Latino, and all these different names around, right? The fact that you're burning the American flag is actually disrespectful to them too. They died, actually, for the same freedoms that that flag represent. The freedoms that were drafted as a result of the things that happened in the past are represented with that flag as well. 
See, it's much more than just military and law enforcement. It's much more than that. And it's much more than that to majority of people. That's why so many people are passionate about the flag. And that's not going to change. The fact that it's, it's actually disgusting to most Americans to listen to American journalists on cable news. We're talking MSNBC. We're not talking like low rent public access. We're talking, we're talking mainstream corporate media news, okay? Being okay with calling this symbol behind me a symbol of white supremacy and calling it a symbol of whiteness. They're okay with that. And that's actually not an okay thing, not just to myself, but to many, many Americans and many people across the globe. In fact, I was just having a conversation with my buddy Mal in Melbourne, Australia this morning. Um, I'm actually working on trying to get the audio back from that recording. Uh, we're trying to do something for the show, but at any rate. Uh, so you guys got that to look forward to um, as well. I just got to reach out to him. Uh, but anyways, we were talking about that. I asked him, I said, as somebody that lives overseas in a different country, what does this flag represent? And he said the same thing. It represents freedom and it represents unity and peace. That's what it's supposed to represent before all of you Marxist brain drained American zombies went out and tried to burn it and do crazy things with it and trying to depict it as something that it's not. Okay. And that's a fact. Um, I really just wanted to touch bases on that. I didn't really want to stay on here that long. I just am curious what other people think as well, because I'm finding it both disturbing, but also a good thing because if, I don't know if you caught it, but Donald Trump released a uh, video not too long ago, or well, he went on and did an appearance, a speech, and actually uh, said, exactly what myself and other people said if you're looking at it like a chess game and you know that the democrats are going to try to keep you from running with some you know part of my french for some bs uh court case that's going to try to stop you from running right wouldn't it make sense that you're going to promote and put people in place to run in different states and different areas that you need them to be put into in 2022 to make it easier for whatever uh, republican presidential nominee there is wouldn't that make more sense to play it out like that than it would to actually count on just the other? See, most of us are looking at it like that. See, a lot of people instantly go, oh, you're just on that Trump thing. You're on that Trump thing. Trump, I wish he would, and I wish there was a way that he could run. And uh, right now, he could run. But if they do, but if they pull that wild card out and they try to hold him into court, it's going to be the type of case that's going to try to keep him from running. Um, from running. And if that happens, the only thing we have is whatever presidential nominee we have. So we can't put all our hope into just Trump, in my opinion. We want to keep our eye on him and we want to root for him. We want to hope that he does. I personally, I think that would be amazing. If he was able to run and win, that would be like the biggest uh, event ever. That would be like huge. You know what I mean? Uh, massive even, I would say. And it would be downright shocking and uh, chaotic as well to the left. I'm not too sure how they would actually take that kind of news. Um, but realistically speaking, let's get real. Though They've already said that they got their attorneys up in New York basically spending hours burning a candlelight oil at midnight, uh, trying to find any little type of thing they can to charge Donald J. Trump so that he cannot run for presidency. Okay. Keep that in mind. Um, and that's what they're trying to do. And by the way, that's not even proper legal procedure anyways. It's not proper law to go in to somebody's family records and personal records and just dig and dig and dig and dig until you can get dirt on them. In fact, that's last time I checked, I'm pretty sure that was actually bordering illegal to do. Um, but call me crazy. I don't know the law that well. I'm not an attorney, but I'm pretty sure it's not legal for them to do that. But hey, you know, the commies got a uh, control of everything right now, it seems like, right? It might seem like that, but they don't. Not yet, anyways. We still have a chance in 2022, and we still have a chance in 2024. I mean, honestly, 
My hope right now at this point is for Trump to run, but I just don't think that's going to be logical. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to do everything they can to stop that from happening. And I also think if it did happen, that would cause like a massive riot across America from the liberals crying. It really would probably. And I think they know that. So I think they're going to try to do everything they can to stop them. And that's the reason why I say I hope because she did say that uh, she did announce that she was talking to her husband and she thinks it's time. I think Candace Owens running would be the best, the second best thing to ever happen to the Republican Party. And there is a comment that's been on my mind. And I do want to say this. She is the perfect candidate because she isn't a career politician. That's what actually makes her great. That's what made Donald J. Trump great is he wasn't a career politician. I mean, honestly, what has a career politician got in us? I mean, let's look at the facts. I mean, we had China Joe in there, not even full for a full year yet. And what do we have? It's right back to the same political B, uh, uh, business as usual in D.C. It's right back to shady room deals. It's right back to foreign nation deals, shady deals with them. It's right back to the Obama era. It's right back to the Bush era. It's right back to just politics as normal. That's what Trump was standing in the way of. And that's what I hope Candace Owens can stand in the way of. That's the reason why I hope that she runs. We need somebody like her. And for the people that don't realize it, she actually has been involved in political commentary for over 20 years, uh, last time I checked. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure she's been doing it for like over, you know, 20 something years. So that's another thing that she has going in her favor. She actually knows politics and she knows politics from covering politics from an outside, from an outside viewpoint. That's a beautiful thing if she can get elected. And that's the reason why I said I would actually vote for her in a New York minute. I wouldn't really second guess it. I got to be honest. I wouldn't. Um, and uh, that's just where I'm at right now with it. You know what I mean? Either which way it goes, I would vote for her. I seriously would. So I hope that she isn't just messing around, and I hope that she really does decide to actually run. I mean, I think that would be great. Um, and for everything else that's going on, it's just life is normal. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to continue just working and stuff like that. Um, as I said before, I did have a special guest appearance today. Uh, we went... I, the platform I used, uh, somehow, whenever I got the video back, there was like the audio was dead in it. So um, I reached out to him and he said that he would be willing to do another interview. So you guys have that to look forward to. I'm hoping to get that done within the next um, couple days or so. Uh, we'll see how that goes, um, if not sooner than that. But we're going to try to get that going as fast as we can as well. So you guys got that uh, to look forward to. And what that will be is part two to the 2021 what has changed now uh series that i'm trying to do and i'm also still looking for guests that i know that uh, or that i don't know that would like to be on that and state your opinions on my about what things have really changed because honestly i gotta be honest in my opinion not too much has changed in fact we're worse than what we were um with the keystone uh pipeline being axed down that's costing thousands of Americans jobs and food right now. There's thousands of Americans questioning how they're going to put dinner on their table. You know what I mean? And what do we get in return? We get skyrocketed prices at the pumps because of Biden's backdoor deals with the uh, people that probably find, par partially finance his campaign. And why am I saying that? Because if you look at pictures from back whenever Biden was actually running, one actually resurfaced. I, uh, I actually put on my working class or my Mike's Random Thoughts uh, Facebook page. Um, and it was a while ago, so you would actually have to look through the pictures uh, to find it. But it was two Chinese people during the election time in Beijing, China. And it said, I participated in voting in the United States election right behind them. So you got to ask yourself, what's really going on? So I'm not going to get all into the uh, theories about the election or whether or not it was stolen. At this point, I'm over that part. What I'm looking at is 2022 and 2024. That's where I think we all should be looking at. And the other thing is, they're still trying to push this LGBT, uh, LGBT trans issue. You see corporations everywhere throwing these logos out there, right? 
But ask yourself this, next month, whenever the their so-called month is over with, you know what's gonna happen, right? They're gonna take all those logos that they had and they're just gonna go, done with that, and move on to the next issue. Because corporations are leaning in, or leaning in towards these little social movements to just do one thing, sell. I mean, and that's really what it is. All these, all these people out there are really fighting for global bankers and actual dictators and actual communists and actual Marxists. And long story short of it, they're fighting for the socialists. So, and they're fighting for the fascists in return. So it's the blind leading the blind, in my opinion, really. And that's why I say at this point, the only thing that we can do to combat that type of stuff is to teach our kids right from wrong and to teach them our personal beliefs. If you're like me and you're a Christian, you already know where I'm going with this. We got to carry on our traditions and teach them right from wrong, uh, right from wrong and biblical pr uh, principle and how to live by that. That's on us to do. Um, and then if you're Muslim, you know where I'm going with this. Same thing applies. You're going to teach them right from wrong. Uh, if you're Jewish, you're going to teach them right from wrong. We have to carry our traditions over to the next generation to be able to combat the Marxist ideology that they're pushing out of Portland. And the reason why I'm saying that is there's an article that I put on there not too long ago uh, from a Portland newspaper that actually showed proof of the Marxist material that they're actually pushing through the Portland school districts and the racist stuff, which is actually telling the kids and teaching them that it's okay to report their parents to the authority. It's okay to re report the kids. The, the kids are told it's okay to report the parents to the authority and to report any unusual activity about the parents and other family members and their neighbors to the school authorities. You know what that is? That's exactly what the Germans did, what the Russians did, what the Italians did. You know what I mean? It's what Pol Pot did in Cambodia and all that. It's what, it's what every dictator has done throughout history. Create a little civilian police force, normally of children, a snitch network that's going to go and run and tell the little local person everything that they see that goes against what they're taught in school. School's a training ground, people. Our American school system... <clears throat> Hold on. Our American school system is being compromised by Marxists. That's not a conspiracy theory. There's articles out there that you can find that support that, that actually show you proof of it that's been leaked out. And more and more are coming forward every single day to show the link between the two. Even recently, there was a Chinese whistleblower that came out and stated the dangers of this uh, uh, Marxist ideology that they're putting into the schools and people's careers and jobs and through the entertainment industry, and through the music, and through the movies, the dangers of it. She literally stated that. I'm going to try to find that article as soon as I can, and as soon as I can, I will put it on my Facebook page. Um, and to all my haters that I'm starting to get, and more and more I'm seeing every single day, keep doing what you're doing. Um, they like to point out how small my show is, so if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and if not, keep doing what you're doing, and I appreciate you listening, and if not, you know... Hey, it is what it is. But like I said, keep doing what you're doing, everybody. This is Mike uh, for Mike's Random Thoughts. I got to go and actually handle some stuff that I got to get done. It's hot as hell in this garage right now in the Midwest where I'm at. So I'm going to go get cooled off and um, I don't know, just go see, uh, go handle some stuff I got to do. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody have a great night. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support you've shown. We're going to take back the Senate, take back the House. We're going to take back the White House. And sooner than you think, it's going to be really something special. But the love and the affection and the respect that you've given all of us, it's really important. The Republican Party is stronger than it's ever been, and it's going to be a lot stronger than it is right now. We're going to turn it around. We're going to turn it around fast. Thank you all very much. That support has been so incredible. Thank you.